This week we are making a Kauai Pop-Tart cake. My name is Lori and you are watching The Icing Artist. For this cake, I basically needed a giant rectangle, so I baked a nine by 13 cake. And every single time, I always line the bottom of my pans with parchment paper. That way they pop out so easy and you can just peel the parchment paper right off. I level off the top. Now I just set my little cake leveler tool to the exact same height and then glide that along my cake. You can mark the exact height you want and use a large serrated knife. I just find this is easier and faster and works. And then I'm just gonna carve off the caramelization from the sides of my cake using my large serrated knife, which basically looks like a giant bread knife. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps the video. And if you're not subscribed to this channel, man, why have you not subscribed yet? Hit that little subscribe button down below. And don't forget to click the notification bell so you know when I put up new content. Now I did notice that this cake is a bit longer than I wanted it to be, so I just cut off the end of it a bit. Now using a small serrated knife, which is my favorite knife for cake carving, I'm just gonna cut a taper edge going on along all the edges of my Pop-Tart because Pop-Tarts usually are more puffed up in the middle because of all the filling. Instead of covering this cake in fondant, I thought this would be the perfect time to cover it in buttercream instead. So to create that really beautiful pastry color, I just dyed my buttercream using ivory food coloring. The same rule applies. You want to add in little bits at a time until you get that darkness that you're looking for because it's easier to go darker, harder to go lighter. But you really need to keep in mind that most colors darken as well, so don't go too dark. I took some of that icing and I put it in a piping bag with a large round tip. I'm just gonna set that aside for a second while I divide my cake into two layers to make room for that filling. Now using that piping bag, I'm going to pipe a border going all around the outside of the cake. This is gonna create kind of like a moat to hold all of our filling in so it doesn't go spilling out. Strawberry Pop-Tarts are by far my favorite, so we're gonna be filling this with strawberry jam. Add the top back on and then I'm just gonna take my hands and kind of press down along the whole top of the cake. You might notice sometimes when you decorate a cake the sides of it, you end up with this little bit of a bulge line where you have the filling. That's because you have a press down on the top that kind of pushes whatever's gonna push out once you have the weight on there out now and then we can smooth it out so we're gonna have that perfectly smooth side. Then I just use that ivory buttercream. I'm gonna give my entire cake a nice crumb coat just to lock in all of those crumbs. Make sure it's thin because we're gonna add a thicker coat on afterwards. Once I have a lot of icing on the cake, I'm going to smooth it out by kind of taking off some of that excess icing. And for this one, I decided to take it off the top first and then go around the four sides of my cake. And then after that, I went along those tapered edges. I found that was the perfect way to get it nice and smooth. But to get this even smoother, I'm gonna take just a napkin and I'm gonna rub that over my buttercream and peel that off. Because this is an American style buttercream, it's a crusting buttercream, I can use a paper towel or a napkin and rub that over the surface and then when you take it off, it gives this flawless, seamless finish that makes it look like fondant, but is tasty. Once I have my cake pretty smooth, I'm just gonna use my napkin and push that in randomly because pastry is not like plastic. It does not have completely perfect edges all around. It has imperfections and character to it. So basically gonna recreate that now. For that icing that's gonna go on top of my Pop-Tart, I decided to do pink fondant. So I'm just gonna roll that out into like a nice big square. You might notice sometimes when you roll out fondant that you get these little air bubbles in them. Have no fear. You just need to get a little pin and kind of insert it on a very low angle so it just lightly pops the air bubble and then you can push all the air out with your hand. And if you just roll a little bit more with your fondant, you're gonna notice any of those little pinholes will completely disappear. And then just use a paring knife to make really wavy edges going all the way around. Now that I have my rough size, I'm gonna go in and kind of take out some of those waves. I feel like I went a little too wavy with that. I went kind of wavy happy, let's be honest. So I'm just gonna take a couple of those out and then get the exact shape that I'm looking for. To pick that up, I decided to use my cake lifter and that picked it up nicely and just draped that right on top of my cake. Now you could just leave the Pop-Tart here and call it a Pop-Tart and add some sprinkles or something on it, but everything is cuter with like a cute little kawaii face. So to do that, I just rolled out my black fondant. I thought it would be really cute to do a winky face, so I cut out a circle for the one eye and a square for the other eye, and then with that square, I'm just gonna cut out another square from it, and that's gonna give me this little tapered corner that I can kind of manipulate. 
I just added a couple white dots onto the circle and those eyes are done. For its mouth, I just cut out a strip of black fondant and then just kind of bent that around into a curve. And then I kind of rounded over the edges because I didn't want them to be square. I wanted everything to be very rounded edges. Cut out another thin strip and just cut that into small little sections and those are gonna be for the eyelashes. And lastly for its cheeks because every kawaii character needs these cute little pink cheeks. I'm just gonna roll out some pink fondant that's a different color pink than we used for the icing on top of the cake and cut out small little ovals. Guys, I have made so many kawaii cakes. If you wanna see the full playlist, believe me, there are a lot. Just click the I here, I'll leave a playlist for you. Next up, I'm gonna glue the face onto the cake and I decided to start with a mouth. I knew that was gonna be exactly center with a cake, so I glued that on first and then I just placed the eyes on top. I did not wet them so that way I could slide them around and figure out exactly where I wanted them to be and then wet the backs of them and stuck them in place. It's kind of like dry fitting. You're just figuring out where you want something to go before it is permanently stuck there. And I did the exact same thing with its cheeks and eyelashes. For the sprinkles, I thought it'd be really cute to make my own custom sprinkles. I mean, this cake needs some sprinkles. I really wanted to do like some pastel colors, so I'm just gonna use my white fondant and dye it for the color I'm looking for. And really, I always use gloves whenever I'm coloring fondant. I just add a couple drops of food coloring and then knead it in my hands until you can't see that color anymore. I always buy white fondant and color it whatever colors I'm looking for, except with pink, purple, black, and red. Those colors, black and red, for one, you would need so much food coloring, it's ridiculous. And purple and pink, I always find I can't get the color I really want. Now, you could roll these out by hand, but I'm just gonna use my clay extruder so I can get really nice uniform shapes. And then once I've done extruding all of my different colors of fondant, I'm just gonna chop those up into little tiny sprinkles. Then I just sprinkled these all across the top of my cake. I didn't add any water until I knew exactly how many sprinkles I wanted and where I wanted them because I am a perfectionist, but I also tend to go sprinkle happy and add too many, so this was a good way to control that. And to take a giant delicious bite out of this pop tart, I just lined up a circle cutter on the edge so I knew where I wanted that bite line to be and then used a paring knife to cut out a perfect little bite shape. Not only is this cake super cute, but it is also going to be super delicious. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Let me know down below what thing you want me to make into like a kawaii cake next. These ones are so much fun. And of course, don't forget to come back here again next week so we can make something else in a cake. Bye guys.